as a Brit, there's nothing quite like the national pastime of being nosy. England has made a history of not minding its own business, helping itself to the treasures of the world for many a century. Whilst that's generally frowned upon now, we still can't help ourselves but just have a cheeky little look at what's out there. So with that being said, we're going to take a tour of the world to see what our fellow nation's leaders are sporting on their wrists. Pronunciation alert, I will pronounce names badly, and not on purpose, but because I'm a cretin, you have been warned. We start in the centre of the world, the United States of America, home to all of history and every invention ever made. It's the birthplace of Jesus and the site of Abraham Lincoln's final showdown with Adolf Hitler. It's also the domain of President Joe Biden, who, as it turns out, is a bit of a watch fan. There's the obligatory Rolex, a date just 41126300 with a smooth, smooth bezel and punchy dial in democratic blue worth around $10,000. But Biden prefers to take it left field, also rocking a $5,000 Speedmaster Moonwatch and a mid-sized Seamaster worth about $3,000, both from Rolex Alternative Omega. Here's a weird one. He's the first US president to own a moonwatch. Rewind to a period that feels like a fever dream at this point when Donald Trump was US president. Here's a man that belongs to the 80s Wall Street era, with a watch collection to match. His $15,000 Patek Philippe Golden Ellipse 3738, $20,000 Rolex Day Date 18038, and $35,000 Vacheron Constantin Historic 1968 are just a kuntash full of quaaludes away from living the 80s dream. Things take a turn for the appropriate when it comes to Barack Obama. His watch collection can only be described as shit, but that's kind of the point. Being a world leader with watches that cost more than a car isn't a particularly good look. During his presidency, he switched up a two-tone $1,500 Tag Heuer 1500 Professional with a $400 Georges Gray 6500 gifted to him by his Secret Service detail. Even after his term, when he could loosen up a little, he still managed to choose the only Rolex nobody wants, the $10,000 Cellini 50509. Extreme national guilt has reduced any chance of a UK Prime Minister wearing a decent watch to basically nil. They'll be rioting in the streets if our leader is seen in public having both jam and butter on a piece of bread, let alone wearing a fancy watch. And so the unwritten rule is that the consumption of luxury by the UK head must go on behind the scenes. It'll still be paid for by the public purse, but if nobody sees it, then no harm, no foul, apparently. As long as the ducks have somewhere to live. So despite having a higher turnover of lead figures than the Ferrari F1 team, there's not been a prime minister in recent history with a watch worth mentioning. Current PM Rishi Sunak wears nothing. Liz Truss before wore a $200 Furler fashion watch. Boris Johnson had a $50 Pulsar, probably from Argos. David Cameron also wore nothing. The only watch even worth a mention was Theresa May's, a small $2,000 Omega Constellation. With the UK turnout being such a disappointment, let's confuse half the nation by looking further afield to the rest of the continent, of which we are still a part, Europe. Despite leaving the EU, to the disappointment of some, we haven't quite figured out how to sail the British Isles to another part of the world yet, and so since France remains our neighbour, we'll start there. If there's one thing the French like, it's the French, and so it's completely in character for French President Emmanuel Macron to treat himself to a couple of French watches, the $400 Merci LMM01 and the $1,000 March Lab AM69. Just like every other French export, no one's ever heard of them. Even Macron isn't 100% choosing a $500 Longines Dolce Vita to make sure he doesn't have to turn up on time to anything. With an average age of 168, Italy looks to an energetic younger president to lead the nation to a brighter and exciting future, so it's to 81-year-old Sergio Mattarella the country has entrusted its leadership. A sprightly young thing, Mattarella has chosen an equally baller timepiece with which to yeet his presidency into the coming decade, a Patek Philippe Golden Ellipse 3738 worth $15,000. Then, to counter the stereotyping of entire nations with a few overly simplistic traits, there's Carl Gustav XVI, King of Sweden. Considered the land of sleek, minimalist style, a place free of the materialistic, gaudy greed that plagues the rest of the world, Sweden is truly a beacon of sensibility. 
with cars too boring to crash and furniture that spans the full gamut of white to off-white. Sweden has truly mastered the art of purity. So it stands to reason then that King Carl can be seen rocking a $3,000 hublot. Tell you what though, I really like Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky's $3,000 skeletonized Tag Heuer Carrera, mainly for two reasons. One, it looks really cool and it has a great spec for the price. And two, from what I've seen, it's generally a bad idea to piss off Zelensky. If you're enjoying this video and you want to support me and the channel, you can. I've written a whole bunch of novels over the years and I'd love it if you read one of them. There's ebooks, print and audiobooks too. You'll find a link in the description below. Thank you very much. You're making my dream a reality. I want to reiterate what I said about making assumptions by listing a few leaders of various African nations and their watches. See if you can guess what watch each of them has before I tell you. Spoiler alert, you won't be able to. First, there's King Maswati III of Eswatini who owns a couple of Jacob & Co watches, including the $1 million brilliant skeleton Torbjorn Ruby. He's also got a spicy $250,000 Rolex GMT Master II Saru, decked out with diamonds, rubies and sapphires. Then there's President of Kenya, Uhuru Kenyatta. He's got a $30,000 Rolex Submariner Hulk, a $60,000 Patek Philippe Aquanaut 5167A, and a $300,000 Alangenzona Datagraph Perpetual Tourbillon. President of the Democratic Republic of the Congo, Felix Shisekedi, has a $40,000 Rolex Daydate 228238 and a $50,000 Rolex Skydweller 326935, whilst President of Gabon, Ali Bongo Ondimba, has a platinum and Rolex Daytona 116506 that goes for $120,000. The flushest African royal of all, however, is Mohammed VI, King of Morocco, who's packing a $1 million Patek Philippe Nautilus 5980. Okay, so now we're getting to the good stuff. When it comes to people with titles like Supreme Leader, you know the watch collections are going to be worth enough to fund a small army. Except that doesn't seem to be the case. North Korea's Kim Jong-un has only been spotted with a $1,000 Movado Museum and an IWC Portofino IW356504 worth $10,000. Never fear, because if it's insane watches you're looking for, some of the smaller Asian nations have got it covered. Sultan of Brunei, Hassan al bolkaya enjoys time with both a Richard Mille 5601 and 5602, collectively worth about $5 million, as well as a Patek Philippe calendar 5740 that costs a bargain $250,000. I mean, you can't expect a sultan to wear a Timex, can you? The Prime Minister of Cambodia, Hun Sen, seems to be doing well too. His collection boasts a Patek Philippe Sky Moon Tourbillon 6002, a Richard Mille 5703 and a Patek Philippe Grandmaster Chime 5175R, which are collectively worth the GDP of a small nation. That's not a joke, that's getting on for about a hundred million dollars worth of watches right there. The two Patek Philippe's are the most complicated wristwatches the company has ever made, with the 5175R being one of only seven in the world. President of the Philippines, Ferdinand Marcos Jr. has a Patek Philippe Chronograph 5980R that seems almost affordable at this point for $150,000. Bringing up the rear and the watches back down to earth is the Prime Minister of India, Narendra Modi, who's often seen wearing an Apple Watch. But now we're going to talk about the guy we've all been waiting for, a man who scored eight goals against a professional ice hockey team, who discovered ancient Greek treasure scuba diving off the Black Sea, who fought a bear and won. It's the one and only Vladimir Putin. He's no stranger to splashing out once in a while, having treated himself to his $1.4 billion, 17,000 square meter residence located on the Black Sea. And so his watch collection game is equally as lavish, consisting of at least a $100,000 FP Jean Chronometre Bleu, a $50,000 Patek Philippe Perpetual Calendar 5039J, and an Al Langenzona 1815 Up Down, worth about $30,000. If you're a world leader and your watch is even more insane than those, let me know down in the comments below. Please don't have me assassinated for leaving you out or including you. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please do like and subscribe if you did and why not check out more of my videos over on the Watchfinder channel. Thanks and see you next time.